is part of corporate diva series and which is essentially covering to celebrate women's day month special for the month of march 2023 and today we have the linchpin behind the series deepika trehan and uh, i would like to take a moment to thank neerja ganesh for introducing deepika to me deepika is, is such a wonderful leader and who is uh, supporting many women leaders across the globe through corporate diva deepika is a leading voice in the world of diversity and inclusion as the founder and ceo of corporate diva she has dedicated her career to creating impactful and unique initiatives for global clients with a special focus on gender generation and neurodiversity her work is not just a tick in the dei checkbox but a true commitment to creating a more inclusive and equitable world for all through her work she brings a human side to business with empathy and compassion at the forefront her expertise in women leadership development global statistics on the gender gap and role modeling make her a sought after resource and leader for organizations looking to make real change her work has been applauded in person by sherry blair an english barrister and writer for her contribution in women leadership development she has been consistently contributing towards employee well-being and development diversity and inclusion at workplace and has created an ever growing tribe of corporate sisterhood through her flagship women leadership development program corporate diva enabling empowerment in corporate india and we are truly honored and privileged to partner with corporate diva tribe and in an effort to feature all the women leaders as part of this corporate diva series for the month of march 2023 This is the Guiding Voice podcast series, the Guiding Voice for a Better Future. Friends, I'm your host Navin Samala, just a fellow IT professional, but on a mission to make the world a better place to live. Through the Guiding Voice, we drive conversations that matter and conversations that add value to your life and to your career. Thank you so much for joining me, Deepika. I'm super super excited to have you part of this conversation and thank you so much for everything that you are doing to the society and uh, really appreciate all your efforts in terms of developing women leaders across the globe especially on the diversity equality and inclusion the dei part which is not one, one thing that caught my attention is dei is not a check box we have to do it by spirit not just by the letter right that immensely talks about the work that you have been doing and kudos and salute to all the hard work that you have been doing and more power to you hearty welcome to the guiding voice thank you navin thank you for such a wonderful introduction and it's completely a pleasure to be on this conversation with you on your fabulous podcast thank you yeah so pleasure to have you uh, deepika and without further ado let's get into our conversation i am curious to understand your career journey of course we had an offline conversation where you briefed me about your corporate career before taking plunge into corporate diva right so i would like you to explain your uh, brief milestones about in your career journey to our audience as well thank you i'm just an ordinary woman like you said you're an ordinary person and ordinary it professional just driving the podcast by passion that's exactly the space that i belong to my background is i hail from the armed forces background and uh, i'm married to a farmer guy so i've seen service right from the place that i was born in to the place that i've been nurtured in academically i am an mba uh, in hr and uh, training and development and um, have had a corporate career then went through the circle of life and uh, had to move countries for close to a decade i was out of india and then uh, got back uh, to india and then got back to the work that i was doing in the corporate space but uh, with the kind of exposure i had and with the learnings that i got outside uh, of the country meeting more diverse people i realized that there is got to be a larger purpose to what i'm doing rather than just reporting to a 9 to 5 job and um, that's where uh, another shift to bangalore happened which is where i said probably this is an inclination by the universe that you start following and doing things that align with your purpose the purpose was 
to to build uh, women leaders until we reach a space, space of equity where we no more have to specify the gender and we just continue building leaders. So that's a little about my journey as a corporate employee, as a person who's experienced life both outside and uh, you know, of of India um, Mm -hmm. and within India and as as a philanthropist, because a lot of my work is driven by passion. A lot has to do with giving back to the society and yet one is able to pay the bills. So it's a beautiful combination. (laughs) Indeed. And now let's talk briefly about top three things that have attributed to your success so far. Maybe you may call them as your success mantras or whatever. So top three things uh, that have really contributed to my success, uh, and and I answer this from a very personal level, there are three elements that I, in my journey, uh, found my anchoring towards. And those three mantras can apply to any scope, any space of life, be it in in the professional ecosystem or even outside the uh, professional ecosystem. And those three elements which I proudly state are sabr, shukr, and sabtera. These are three Hindi words. Sabr means patience, perseverance. Shukr means gratitude. And sabtera means surrender. Now, let me explain that a little more for the audience. Life, no matter in which phase you are, will challenge you, will push you, will put you down in pits before it lifts it up. And You've got to be perseverant. You've got to be patient to understand and trust that process. So patience is a massive virtue which plays a massive role in the journey of an individual, uh, be it in their social or professional ecosystem. Shukra is gratitude. And we hear a lot about this whole buzzword called gratitude. Uh, But what is important is that we often pay gratitude. Oh, thank you, God, I got a promotion. Oh, thank you, God, I got this. But we always express gratitude for when we when we perceive things as a reward, recognition, or positive coming into our lives. I've learned to pay gratitude to the not so positive things that came into my life because traversing through this journey, I realized that it was the not so good things that were the blessing in disguise, that were the rewards and recognition that nurtured and differentiated me to build differently from the the, the rut. So massive gratitude for that. And of course, coupled with the gratitude of having a, you know, a, a roof over your head and the meal on your plate. And the third being Sabtira. Sabtira is essentially a, a Hindi translation of surrendering. And surrendering to a larger power. And I believe, and I've learned to believe, uh, that uh, when you're hustling and doing your best for achieving something, And no matter how hard you try, it's not translating in your favor. Means there's a larger power guiding you towards a door, a path that is meant for you, which probably you're missing out on. So somewhere, when you've had the patience and perseverance, when you've been expressing gratitude, when you've been doing what you've been needed to be done, and still things are not going your way, that's when you say, all right, God, I surrender to the larger power guide me to the path that I'm meant to be on. So these elements truly, truly define uh, my career path as well. Mm -hmm. Such a profound set of thoughts. And uh, I could uh, resonate with you on point number three. Like when we started uh, TGV in English, right? uh, We were listed in global top 3%. But my goal was to get into top 2.5% last year. It did not happen. And then off late, I realized, okay, Many of my community members have been asking, why don't you start channel in Telugu? Right. I started that and it has become a huge success. And later I started getting more and more requests from people across India saying, that, why don't you start it in Hindi? Right. That is where I can relate to. I think probably we are destined to fit into a larger purpose. Right. Rather than confine it ourselves to a single language or something of that sort. So it actually... Uh, resonated with me so well and thank you for sharing those thoughts now let's uh, highlight the challenges that you faced as a woman okay in your career journey both in the corporate world as well as as an entrepreneur right and how did you overcome those challenges Deepika? sure um you know as a woman professional at work 
um you know we come across that whatsapp image of a woman with multiple hands right uh, t- at least five set of hands right, behind yeah. her i think in day to day life as well we women have so many hands just that they're probably invisible uh, which also translates to the fact that there are certain challenges certain responsibilities that we shoulder on ourselves which we may ourselves be unaware of and just take it on uh because it is the dumb thing to do so i think the challenge number 1 for me would be the fact that we tend to take on a lot on ourselves and keep it to ourselves without asking for support without delegating the burden of responsibilities and you know our to do list that come our way so the first challenge would be that i have not successfully in the initial years of my career successfully delegated and asked for support which i learned in the process that needs to be done the second challenge is there are prevalent biases there are certain stereotypes and gender does play a role in terms of how you are perceived in the professional ecosystem maternity happens uniquely to women marriage happens and suddenly i have been through a phase where i was lined up for an international project and the moment i broke the news on me getting married as though my marriage just cancelled out my credibility of all those years of work very politely i was shifted out of the project you know how you know words can play but deep inside i knew that it was that step in my life which caused that kind of a uh, a, a hurdle uh, you know but uh, so that is one thing that that happened my way which which was a challenge and the third thing is that initially and i'm talking about challenges that i've been able to overcome which is why i can highlight the importance of these challenges is lack of, of self belief mm-hmm. we women struggle massively with the imposter syndrome we question our credibility time and again we question ourselves time and again am i good enough will i be able to do it and somewhere we communicate to the universe that i'm not ready enough for the opportunity that you're bringing my way and i did that for a while until i was pushed to a corner where i had to relook at my entire journey till then and say that you know what these three are my critical roadblocks let me overcome them because i'm already in a spot and things are not working out my way worst case scenario i will remain in that spot trust you me that was the best decision i took for myself because the moment i overcame those three challenges it's been a a never look back journey right a few facts that are hard to digest but how you overcome them that matters and now if you look at the hind, hindsight right it it feels so powerful and whatever the decisions that you have taken you are going to appreciate them so that is one example that uh, resonates very well with many women that are watching this episode or listening uh, to this conversation before jumping into core of today's topic like leading like a women first let us understand the difference in leadership between men versus women is there any difference as such there's a lot of difference and that's not derogatory to the other gender because i believe that it's a hand in hand walk together we are made differently and i think for a larger reason because what one gender brings to perspective the other gender brings a different perspective to the table so you can't say that it's a win win only on one side having said that the world that we live in is hugely masculine so our our sense of power our sense of success our sense of uh, self belief has been very masculine in nature right? so if you're making a lot of money and you're being aggressive in your uh, career and you um are not that be being that home oriented uh, you know that is when you are saying that all right now i'm on my success path what differentiates the man and a woman at work is the fact that men think a little differently than women than women women innately bring in a sense of compassion empathy but at the same time women are great taskmasters as well which is an a quality which has not been recognized that enough because our empathy and compassion and emotions have always taken the forefront and perceived as a weakness whereas if you see the past 3 years of the pandemic itself 
decisions that have excelled and made a difference in people's lives and have been able to somewhere control the spread of the pandemic have been decisions made on empathy and compassion so they are superpowers and that set of superpower the women force bring into the corporate world and that's the space that's the differentiator which so far has been looked upon as not a great uh, element towards leadership but uh, time has proven that we need to kind of own our femininity and bring that element to the table for the larger good of all even the economic benefit of the organizations that we work mm-hmm. uh, two things have stood out from your previous answer one is the empathy and compassion right so what i feel is maybe women carry that empathy and compassion by default and add that human element okay during the leadership conversations and in terms of nurturing the budding leaders and in many facets of the entire career journey apart from this are what are other benefits okay that you would like to highlight in terms of when we have women at the fore or women in the leadership positions so if you look at data and statistics women play a massive role in the economic contribution towards global gdp growth right in fact uh, going by the statistics of the um, world economic forum and other such uh, forums if women reach a stage of equality and contribute economically we can add almost up to 3 to 5 trillion dollars just by 2025 to the global economy so which means that here we are not only just talking about the softer element of being a woman and feminism and all of that we are talking business we are talking what we bring to the table in terms of economic growth and development how does that happen that happens because a woman at work innately also has the quality of involving and doing things for a larger benefit for a community benefit there's an age old saying that educate a man you'll educate a home educate a woman you'll educate a village right so which means that women have always been community driven they have always factored in you know the the phases of the employees that they're going through and if you see i mean look at look closer home right i can tell you for my myself um, my biggest taskmaster has been my mother and my biggest nurturer has been my mother right so which means a woman can play multiple roles at the same time and get the work done look any household the women get the work done so uh, therefore you know what i would say is that we've got to kind of visualize leadership in a manner which is more inclusive in a manner wherein women are able to contribute more towards the growth of the community because when that happens you're automatically adding to the economic growth of any organization or even a country yeah in in fact you remind my childhood uh, the way my mom has played a critical role in shaping in uh, all of our siblings to into great uh, individuals and all right so she has taken the role of both the taskmaster as well as the nurturer and also thanks for highlighting that and um, you see these are all some wonderful qualities that uh, are innate to women right so what factors impact women's ability to lead others i think the one very important factor is and that's been scientifically proven as well if you look at the brain of of a woman versus a man a woman is a multitasker whereas a man can handle two maximum three tasks at a time a woman could handle 10 tasks at a time that does not dilute her efficiency towards those tasks right so that is one differentiator where if you're saying that you know towards leadership how do women play a role women play a role because they can multitask between several uh, asks uh, that are that are put to her and deliver effectively on every ask so this this was one thing that i wanted to highlight here yeah multitasking and without diluting the efficiency okay now uh, let's talk about the barriers in to the women leadership what do you think is the most significant barrier and in your especially in your case right what has been the most significant barrier like you highlighted one thing about your marriage which impacted your uh, project assignment and all is there anything else that you would like to call out in this conversation 
So I'd like to answer the first part of your question first, which is what are the barriers, which is that one significant barrier of women in terms of their career growth and, uh, you know, uh, leading their trajectory towards leadership. And that one barrier of my experience of interacting with thousands of women across the globe has been that one is very seldom do we have our ask. We don't know what we really want. And therefore, there is a lack of voice uh, in, in a room and, and therefore we are not heard. So the biggest challenge um, I feel is that women don't have a voice enough also backed by the fact that they don't have clarity in where they want to head to and also the fact that they don't ask for that clarity. I've seen a lot of women in organizations very credible, very capable but sitting on their desk for their managers to identify talent in them and then upskill that talent. You know, vis-a-vis men would say, hey, this is a skill I have and this is what I can bring to the table and therefore voice out a need of being coached or mentored on that skill and how that skill can then add value. So it's about having your ask clear and have, you know, making that voice heard. That's a challenge I feel a lot of women have and which is not very difficult to overcome. Talking about my biggest challenge in my journey has been lack of support. The only reason why this whole tribe and this whole empire of corporate diva came into being in the first stage was because when I was in a stage of life in my professional journey, needed support. Of, you know, we've got sisterhood all over in the social system. We have our aunts, our, our mothers, our sisters, and everybody. We lack a professional sisterhood ecosystem. And I needed that ecosystem to fall back when I was grappling with certain life stages and professional life stages um, in my own career path. So when I realized that lack of support and how that impacted my career journey is when I set out to convert that challenge into something more meaningful and create this whole tribe of corporate diva and, and the work that we do across organizations. So lack of support was my biggest challenge, but uh, those were, I'm talking almost about two decades ago. Today we have technology and uh, it will again fall back to the fact that do we have our ask clear? Am I asking for support? Because today support is available. Well, first of all, congratulations on starting this corporate diva. Like uh, you face, you have come across some problem and you came up with the solution, which is helping thousands of women across the globe. So really appreciate all the work that you are doing. And uh, typical now, let's also talk about uh, navigating these power structures, right? Of course, navigating power structures is essential for both uh, women leaders as well as men leaders. But how can women, since we are focusing more about empowering our women leaders within the community and provide them that sort of ecosystem and all, so it would definitely benefit all the women that are listening to this episode if you could highlight How can they navigate power structures successfully? Sure. I think my learning through this journey of mine has been that power structures also are built around a lack of awareness and a boxed perception. I'll give you from my own example. When I was heading out with this whole concept of corporate diva towards women leadership development, one is I kept my ego aside and I started literally from traveling the roads of Bangalore and knocking, uh, you know, offices of organizations, telling them what I had in mind and how value can be created and all of that. But before I could even speak, the word corporate diva, diva in particular, didn't let me go forward to even meet up with the HR people. There were several times where I was shown the door, the exit door saying that, Madam Diva, no, we don't want to get a ramp walk done in the office. Right. And I was very clear that diva, people have a boxed feeling and understanding of it. But diva is a feeling every woman at work who shows up to work at par with the male fraternity, overcoming all the challenges behind scenes. So diva is a mindset and every woman needs to feel a diva. It's it's, it's a feeling rather than just, you know, the glam part of it. So a lot of mentors who came my way also told me that, you know what? This word diva seems to be a hurdle in your journey. Why don't you give it a more corporate name so that it opens doors for you? Now, that's where perseverance and self-belief comes into play, right? 
I stuck on to the word diva because I knew what it has to mean. And I knew that if this, this tiny little iota of I'm not actually setting out to do the kind of work that I want to do. So therefore, I, I was insistent on diva. There were a lot of setbacks that came, uh, a lot of opinions that came. But because of that strong belief in self, I finally reached a space where three years ago, the client that who showed me the exit door because of Diva and did not want to get a ramp walk done, called out to me. Of course, people change and, you know, the rotation happens in organizations. Called out to me and said that, uh, Madam, we want you to curate a women leadership development program for us. And uh, if possible, can we position it in a manner like how Corporate Diva is positioned? That was the victory for me. That's been the biggest badge I have earned where the term where Diva showed me the door uh, to exit out of not even meeting the people and telling what I'm wanting to say to somebody saying that we want you to curate something for us with the brand value of Diva. So how do you navigate power structures? You navigate power structures. One is by keeping your ego aside. Setting Second is to provide awareness to people. Probably they come from a very boxed perspective. And third, most importantly, is to believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself and you're convinced about it, then just go head on with it. Do not switch gears just because somebody else comes with their perspective and you've got to kind of mold into their perspective. That's that's fabulous and a very inspiring story. All right. So with that, let's move on to the next part. Uh, can, you, can you also highlight uh, certain global challenges that women are facing? especially women in workforce are facing today? You know what, you'll be surprised. Um, I was sent to uh, Israel uh, on a scholarship by the government of Israel for four weeks. And we were uh, 23 women selected from 23 countries uh, for that particular scholarship. And uh, the world often talks about, oh, Indian women need empowerment. You know, they struggle with biases and stereotypes and all of that. But with that exposure of literally every woman representing a country, I realized that the challenges are very similar. Most of them suffer this whole prejudice of uh, stereotypes, of uh, gender bias, of maternity being one big challenge, of uh, their, you know, the feminine elements that they bring to work being perceived as weaknesses rather than uh, strength. But I think the two factors that every woman is hungry for is dignity and respect of the labor that they bring to the table. Often, women's work in particular is not given the kind of respect and dignity as what men's contribution is made uh, for. So I think uh, globally, yes, because I had a Georgian lady in that batch and she said that, you know what, I was a single child to my parents. And the one thing she wanted in life was to have a nice, big, happy family. So she said, I wanted at least five kids. And um, every and she has five kids today. But every time she had a baby, every time she was questioned for the next project. And she said, I'm still delivering. She's done her PhD. She's done her education. She, she's, she's an authority today in Georgia. But she said, even at this stage, every day is a struggle. How are you going to balance work and your children? So those are challenges that are common to women across the globe. But people need to realize that we have a lot of multitasking skills far better than the male gender. We can task our priorities well and perform effectively. So they needn't worry that much about our pregnancies or our childbirths and our maternities. <laughs> Such a powerful story. So, Deepika, this has been great conversation so far. I would like you to share certain things so that our audience will get to know your personal side. So, if you are okay, I'm going to kick off a quick rapid fire round. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, let me find the first one. Can you complete this sentence? On a typical Sunday, you will see me, as in Deepika, dash. So on a typical Sunday, you'll see me very, very, very lazed out, right? My boys, my husband, my, hus my son and my daughter contribute towards the household thing. So you'll find the pickup very chilled out and lazy. <laughs> That's nice. 
at least you are getting to rest on a Sunday and moving to the next one. Can you just describe yourself in one word? I'm a philanthropist. I believe in giving back to the society. At the same time, I believe in the dignity of my labor, which needs to be paid for. So it's a it's a great combination. Philanthropist, 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 superb. And here comes the next one. Did you steal anything from anyone? And I'm referring to physical or materialistic. Well, I am a woman of integrity, but I think the last thing probably I stole was my husband's heart. <laughs> okay, and what are your pet peeves? Well, uh, I'm I'm a I'm an animal lover. I have a three-year-old Dachshund at home, a uh, buddy, and uh, I won't say any particular pet peeves. I think they are beautiful beings created by God, which is why they've been named the other way uh, with the same letters, which is dog. So, the, yeah. I mean, uh, all animal love here. <laughs> <laughs> Moving to the last one. What is one electronic gadget or the fantasy gadget that you like to see or invent yourself? I think a gadget that can define a woman's worth and her credibility, because I think there is still time for her to speak up for herself. The World Economic Forum tells that we're still ninety-nine point five years away from gender equity and equality. So if there's a gadget that that can speak our worth and communicate that and put that worth into action for a fast paced closing of the gender gap uh, and especially if it can be done within the timeline line that I'm alive uh, I think I would any day do anything for that gadget <laughs> such a creative one and uh, with that let's flip back to the mainstream and before I let you go one final question for today's conversation how do you encourage women to not give up Deepika I encourage women to not give up by just telling them to be vulnerable enough to express themselves in all their authenticity. Most of the times because of certain perceived perceptions or opinions people have about us and our stages that we go through, we put up a facade. And most of the times when you ask people how are you doing, everybody will say I'm doing okay. they might just be crumbling inside so the one thing that i would want to leave this conversation is that please 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 own up your authenticity be courageous enough to express your vulnerability ask for support because like you the other side is also equally human and you never know you might just be the torch bearer of having somebody else uh, reach out for support rather than crumbling within fantastic fantastic message and uh... with that uh, thank you so much deepika thanks for uh, joining me today it was wonderful interacting with you and at the same time so inspiring and i'm sure uh, this episode is going to add a lot of value to all the uh, women leaders that are aspiring to grow and make it big in their careers as well as lives thanks again for your time and wonderful insights really appreciate it a complete pleasure at my end thank you so much and i have done my set of research on your podcast and the kind of passion and effort that goes behind it So I wrote to you as well but I would like to mention that here as well kudos to all the hard work that you're doing keep up the good work and very soon we'd want to see you in the top 1% globally <laughs> in podcast thank you thank you so much for all the best wishes kind words as well as the blessings as well and uh, as I keep telling this is all because of um, Uh, strong ecosystem that we have built for ourselves and uh, people like you are coming forward and supporting and definitely i'm optimistic that we'll make it to top 1% in 2023 thanks again all the best thank you thank you so much so friends that was our episode with uh, deepika trehan founder of corporate diva and as i said the linchpin behind corporate diva series which we are featuring as part of women's day month in this march 2023 and before we move into the trivia section here is a request to you in case if you haven't subscribed to us please subscribe from the app where you have tuned in from also if you have loved this episode and found the conversation useful request you to share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who can benefit from the guiding voice thank you so much in advance now let's hop into the trivia segment of today's episode so today's trivia is about michelle obama i'm sure it would not be an exaggeration if i say that none of the audience that are listening to this podcast are not aware of michelle obama michelle obama was the first african american us first lady and she was the wife of uh, 44th uh, us president barack obama 
and today i'm presenting you a few lesser known facts about her michelle obama before her uh, time as a first lady worked as a lawyer and an as an administrator at the university of chicago medical center and she is a strong advocate for education and has worked to promote healthy eating and physical activity for children through her let's move campaign she is also a best selling author with her memoir becoming selling over 10 million copies worldwide in fact she is also an avid reader and often mentions her love for books and how reading has shaped her life she is a talented public speaker and has given several well received speeches including at the 2008 democratic national convention michelle is a strong advocate for women's rights and has used her platform to address issues such as pay equity and work life balance michelle is also a lover of music and has a l- playlist that includes artists such as stevie wonder marvin guy and beyons in fact she is also a fan of the chicago cubs and has thrown out the first pitch at a cubs game interesting isn't it overall she is a great inspiration to all the budding women leaders and uh, the guiding voice platform wishes more power to her so that she keeps inspiring many more women across the globe so that's all for today and before i let you go folks in case if you have any women leader okay who could add value to the guiding voice platform please recommend them to me you can just reach out to me through social media or email me at the guiding voice for you at the gmail.com i'm your host navin samala just a fellow it professional but on a mission to make the world a better place to live through the conversations that matter through the conversations that add value to your life and to your career until next time bye bye see you all in the next episode with another wonderful guest